See, the thing is, Michael's got a uh, OnlyFans or no, sorry, it's a podcast <laughs> podcast here with, it's called People More Interesting to Me, but from talking to Michael, I found him pretty interesting, so I'm happy to have him on the show. We're going to talk about some cool historical events. So I guess if you could just tell us a little bit about you, maybe your family, your, yeah, give it, give us the Michael. So one of the things I found your podcast really interesting, despite the fact that you think other people are more interesting than you, I want to know a little bit more about you. So can you, if you just wanted to, anything that you're comfortable sharing about your personal life and kind of work, things like that, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Originally from Maryland, Montgomery County. It's actually a very unique county because it's so super diverse. It's not a huge city, but it's right outside of DC. So you've got like diplomats, all those people. So I was raised like in a very diverse area because you have some of the richest people in the country, but then you also had really poor people in the same county. So it's like extremely diverse and extreme wide range of wealth and the poor. So I'm from Maryland, but now I live in Virginia. I'm an engineer. That's my job. Government, federal, I always forget how to say this, government contracted entity. And I also have MS, which I try not to let that define me because it, it really doesn't affect me that much right now because I'm taking medicine, trying to exercise, all that stuff that people say when you get something yeah. horrible. <laughs> but yeah. Always make you awkward, yeah. And yeah, I've got my podcast, People More Interesting Than Me, and and I'm just trying to do my best with it. Big podcast, big podcast energy. Yeah, and you mentioned it something to me last time we had spoke, we had tried to record this before, just about how, I guess something like I talked a little bit before about how death really interests me and the whole concept of mortality. And you talked a little bit about the idea of having a legacy with your podcast. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. So when I, and I didn't start this podcast right when I figured out I had MS, to be honest, I thought, I don't know why I think this, because from the outside, I feel like I would have cried or done something like that, but it, I never did that. So I don't know if it's, I don't know, holding back or maybe it, it'll just never come, but I didn't start the podcast till I actually had kids. Cause then I was like, okay, it's not just me anymore. And my wife, I guess I never thought of doing it for my wife, but for my kids, I was trying to, like you said, leave a legacy, not just something that I, they could listen to. I think I mentioned this to you already. If um, there's a Tupac documentary that just came out on Hulu that basically they took all his recordings that he did, cause he did a lot of recordings, not just music, but interviews. And they basically have him narrating his documentary because he's basically oh. done so many recordings and I just interviewed someone actually and they had mentioned it to me I hadn't heard that and I was like that is fascinating I know that they could do and I guess they're doing that these days with AI but not really AI it's people recording probably over 300 or thousands of syllables and basically they're just regurgitating them and piecing them together where they sound basically fluid so I I didn't do it for that reason I did it for the reason that maybe they could listen to me if I'm not coherent or I'm not able to talk because a lot of people with MS, sometimes they go blind. Sometimes, I don't know. It's similar to a stroke where you see people have that uh, like numbness in one side of their mouth too, where they can't really talk normal. And also financially, I thought it would be, for example, if I get fired from my job, because my job, obviously getting fired from my job is such a, a huge thing to do to someone who's disabled, but you never know. So I thought it would be a good way to fall back just in case something happens to me severely through my MS. Yeah, that's tough. It's uh, it's funny you mentioned that when your job, the fear of reprisal, that's always something anybody I think with disabilities are, has to worry about. You think it goes, you think in 2023, you wouldn't have to, but it's surprising how much, I want to say discrimination there still is. I had a question about, like you mentioned, worrying about losing your job and such. So being an American citizen, like, if you lose your job, does that mean that you could potentially lose your health care? And also, I think from our other conversation, yeah, I'd love to hear your take on, I said, got to make the, I can't remember which one, what the debate was, whether I had asked if you would make the case for Canadian or American health care being better. I think it was for American. 
Yeah, you. Sh so let me answer your first question. So it depends on what state you are in. I think it might be a federal rule that your employer has to offer you the option for your health care for another month after you get fired. But like I said, I think it probably depends on state if I had to guess. But and then after that, they have options, but it's not cheap, especially that's why it's like a given most of the time to get health care in the U.S. through your job, because outside of it, it's, I don't know, for a decent plan. And it also depends how many people you have at your work, because the more you get, the cheaper it'll be. But if I had to ballpark, like it probably costs you $600, $500 for an okay plan wow. out of pocket. And that, that goes into what we talked about, Obamacare and how it's funny that in, I don't know if this is mentioned, but in Wisconsin in 2010, I want to say Obamacare was the people in Wisconsin basically put laws into effect so that they could choose their own health care and that Obamacare didn't tell them what kind of health care they had. And obviously, these were mostly Republicans. I, By the way, I have no political party. If anything, I'm a moderate or not political at all. But yeah. fast forward to 2023 and if you're aware of the current standing, abortion is illegal in the U.S., but obviously there's different rules concerning states, but that same law in Wyoming came back to bite Republicans where they got to choose their own health care, basically affected the legality of actually getting abortion, and then they couldn't take those rights away from what they have given by Obamacare. So it just came full circle, and I thought that was funny. Couldn't he yeah, but yeah. Uh, I don't want to argue American healthcare because it's, it's not really, it, it doesn't make sense. And it seems like, and I think I mentioned this on the last one, it's like the Simpson car where he put too many things on it and it's too late to really hit the reset button. And it's sad. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> the Persephone. That's right. Okay. Along those lines, actually an interesting fact. I don't know if this is, since our last chat or not, but I was just seeing in the news that some provinces here are starting to try to privatize a little bit of our healthcare. And it comes back to that same argument that you just said, it's about people's right to choose that they can go and see. So that's interesting to see that we're, yeah, but hopefully we're not following suit. Yeah. Uh, what are the, what would you, what are they touting as the arguments for privatizing? Cause usually it's backed by money. That's the big thing. It's just to alleviate the strain on the public health care since that's always been the argument. Faster access. Is, faster access to whom? Faster access. So yeah, rich people get better doctors, poor people stay poor. And it yeah. That's sounds, that's the I argument mean, against it. Yeah. It sounds like it's going straight to but there's gotta be an option in Canada for rich people to get like it, for example, would it be illegal for a doctor to like not open himself up in Canada to all like the, I don't know what you call it, the, the national insurance where you were special. Like all these rich people had to pay like out of pocket for all these services. They do have an option. It's America. That's exactly <laughs> what I think that's what they do. They go down there and get, they, they will pay to get, they their get their done. cheeseburger while they're down here. I don't know so much that there's law necessarily prohibiting. Like I know there is like, Private healthcare is a big no-no, but I think it's also, there's like a salary cap for our doctors. So I think that so, at a certain point, they don't make any more money. Yeah. And so billing wise, yeah, like I don't think they can charge privately. I could be wrong. I know like plastic surgeons can, if you want like your boobs done or whatever, FYI, if you ever want that done. But yeah, it's just, it's an interesting thing. I don't know. There's, it's truly like, I'm with you, like politically, I don't really have a political, I'm in the center. So it's like, I see the argument both ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, and I love to tout this. I, I ironically do not listen to, I don't know anyone above the age of, or sorry, below the age of 35, 36, who actually listened to the news on TV. I don't know what's going to happen to like, you news. Know. like, I don't even, I mean, obviously I know people listen or follow Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, God forbid, but that music is like live music you're getting. And obviously that's the main thing of Twitter. Twitter is just like instantaneous where all these other social platforms, it's, I don't know. It's like, you got to wait for the wave. Whereas this is like a shot. It's just like instantaneous. And with the news, I just think, I don't know. I look at my parents, my parents, 
sadly, but thankfully live with us to look at the kids like during the week, they babysit and they just watch the news at six o'clock and seven o'clock, like local national news. And I just think it's so funny. It's just like a ceremony. You know what? And I think a lot of it too, is when I see the news on TV, I feel like it's desensitized. Like you're just numb watching it. There's nothing coming out of it anymore. It's not exciting compared to what on what people are watching on TikTok and YouTube but, and stuff and the lies. The but you're going to miss on today. You know how like they've got that like newscaster voice where you yeah. won't hear anywhere else. It's just, and then they yeah. have that story that really makes you weep. I haven't seen my grandson in 15 years, <laughs> but they always throw that in and it's just, okay. No, I could watch this in 10 seconds on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And it's the there's always an agenda, right? That's never, you always feel like you're being told something for whatever reason they're promoting something or they're doing something else. So it's just, it's become a weird thing. And it's a weird thing that the news is political. Half the news is just political commentary. And well, it's, it's gotta be political, right? Cause yeah. there's the people behind, like there's two angles. One it's the company can't like crap on, let's say, I don't know, let's say Kraft Macaroni owns the company and they can't, crap on like milk farmers or something like that for their advertisements or the news like they've got to sadly like cater to that if that makes sense no it does it's just actually it's that reminds me of another thing it's it is people we often like oh we blame the government and we blame the corporations we blame them like yeah there's some pretty bad stuff going on but on the other hand like that is that's still us we're still doing that like we're the reason it's just the way we work as a species like we're still somewhat primal i don't know it's yeah where did i go with that no, um, you're right it snake chasing its own tail basically yeah it really is one of the things like i had mentioned before is my fascination with death kind of started me to podcast so i was as part of this i wanted to bring to you a few short stories and i guess if I choose your own adventure i'll read you five of them and i won't go through everything we'll just because i don't want to make you like repeat all the stuff we don't need to, but, and you can pick new ones if you want. It's up to you too. We have Franz Reichfeld, the flying tailor, Austrian born French tailor who attempts to fly off the Eiffel tower. We have the great molasses flood of 1919. We have King Alexander of Greece who met his demise when he tried to stop a fight between his dog and a Barbary macaque. Then we have Thornton Jones, a lawyer who slit his own throat while sleepwalking. And then we have the American daredevil, Bobby Leach. So yeah, I think we'll do two of them. Okay. I'll yeah. do the molasses and I'll do the suicide one. That one still fascinates me. Like just yeah, the details of that. Yeah. After a conversation, actually, I would, did decide, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a full episode on this guy. Cause it, not so much that it's just, it's weird. And then talk about you mentioned, I guess we can get into that now, but you mentioned earlier too about your own issues with sleepwalking. Yeah. And I started getting fascinated and thinking like how many people have sleepwalked like down a flight of stairs or out onto a freeway or something. And anyway, yeah, I'm going to be doing an episode, but I'd love to hear a little bit about your experience. Well, with me, I don't even, it only happened when I was younger, but I, I would walk upstairs, I would stand up. And obviously everyone knows like whenever you talk, it's just gibberish. Like I've yeah. never seen it ever line up with something. Like I've never remembered the dream that whatever I said, but like sometimes I even talked like somebody would say something like to me while I was sleepwalking. Obviously I don't remember any of this, but they said I would have a conversation with them. It was, I don't know if you see those wisdom teeth videos where they've got the gauze <laughs> and I would imagine it's like that because a, I don't think a lot of people remember what they say when they're like that. It's like a, what do they call that state? Not a fugue state, but lucid. Yeah. Yeah. Basically yeah. lucid, at least the way you're acting. And like I said, you don't remember anything. And then this just goes to the fact slitting your own throat. I've heard of maybe people, I don't even think I've ever heard of people fighting sleepwalking. So I can't even imagine slitting your throat. And I can't imagine like any action of actually, unless you're doing some pop and locking or something <laughs> like that. I can't imagine somebody 
slitting their own throat while they're sleepwalking. Yeah, we have Thornton Jones. Sounds like the name of a lawyer for sure. And that's exactly what he was living in the bustling hub of London. So I guess actually he would be a barrister. Jones was a respected figure in the legal community, a solicitor in London, and he's having trouble sleeping. And maybe, yeah, maybe that's the, maybe he was like, so stress from work is really getting, getting to him. And so at night, it was not unusual for him to walk around his home during these sleepless bouts. And during these times, sometimes it said he would be mulling over legal cases, like mumbling them while he's walking around. But on this particular night, Thornton Jones in this unconscious state somehow manages, and I cannot find the answer exactly how, he manages to slit his throat in a subconscious act of self-harm. His family wakes up in the middle of the night, horrified and call for medical help. Despite the urgency, he passes away, not some within the hour. He's dead and his family's just blood soaked and mystified as to what the fuck is going on. So the coroner rules it. Yeah. Like it's a self-inflicted sleepwalking suicide. And I guess we'll just start. We'll circle back to what we talked about earlier. Like suicide. 1924 so basically i'm trying to 1924 so five years before the u.s depression yeah u.s depression and then okay it's in london okay uh, the time. and the only thing i can think of in europe is like 2000 i'm oh, sorry 1911 is i think world war one you said he was a lawyer right yeah he was a lawyer if the family maybe is having it on the outs maybe they could just I don't know. They colluded together. They made up some baloney story about him sleep. Honestly, it sounds like one of those Sherlock Holmes type short stories, If which I love Sherlock Holmes. My dog's name is Sherlock. But yeah. it sounds like one of those where he, I don't know, they colluded, they set up this elaborate story, and then it takes someone who like thinks outside of the box to try to, I don't know, piece it together without any clues whatsoever. Because this is all hearsay. Oh, yeah, he's sleepwalking. He must have cut his own throat. Like, I uh, I don't know. It, Sounds a lot like the like woman that says, talking about falling down the stairs after their husband. Yeah. It's like a baloney story or whatever. Do you think at that time, I'm pretty sure, like you said, it was pretty rife with gang activity, like in London as well at that time. And. You mean the Peaky Blonders? That's, that's exactly it. Yeah. I was just wondering, I'm like, yeah, like, I wonder if it could have been gang activity. And yeah, lawyer. Gangs always need lawyers. Yeah. You think good ones. <laughs> oh, man. Fuck. That's still, like, I just, the sight of this guy, like, running around, it's just fucking scary, man. I'm excited. I'll let you know when I do that episode, because it's going to be, like, I haven't fully researched it, but there's going to be, it's going to be funny, I think, because there's no way the family didn't kill him. Yeah, you should so, look at a point of views if you have them. I don't know if they would have this, but who inherited the money? And oh yeah, yeah, you could do a full. What age he was too, and how him break? Oh, it's not breaking his leg, but I don't know his other, like how well known his sleepwalking was. Yeah, like outside the family. There's something though, like back then, because I've in history, I was there's another guy I can't think of. It was H. H. Holmes, but. I was reading a little bit about his case. It was so easy back then to just, oh, I want to be this person. So I'm just going to go into the whatever office and tell them I'm this person yeah. now and we'll give you a new ID and whatever yeah. it was back then. I was just talking on another podcast and it was we were talking about Catch Me If You Can and how easy it was back then to just, because nothing was digital, nothing was networked and you could basically get away with blank checks. Like, you send it like checks were just sent back to whatever bank they went to. That's still somewhat like today, but they're pretty like if you bounce like three or four checks, you're they're coming for you. It's it maybe not for like small amounts, but if they're like five hundred, ten thousand like, exorbitant amounts, they're coming for you nowadays. But whatever that guy's name. There was there's another dude I remember he parachuted out of a plane, DB Cooper. Yep. D.B. Cooper. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, That's a good story. I don't know if I buy it. 
<laughs> that's I buy it, but I don't think he lived. That seems like the most logical thing is that being a guy that works out in the environment, I know how quickly things disappear, like body yeah. wise. But yeah, like animals. You just mean somebody shoots a moose or poaches a moose or something. It doesn't last that long. Wolves, yeah. a pack of wolves, it's gone. Like a yeah. couch when I put it outside on the curb. Yeah, just like it is. Yeah, like that. Except it goes to except it goes to good use. <laughs> it's not somebody's fuck couch. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. The Great Molasses Flood. Now I don't remember. We didn't do this one last time, right? So I'll just run no. it through. Okay. So in the year 1919, the city of Boston is booming with the Industrial Revolution. And in the north end of the neighborhood near the city's docks stands a massive dark towering. Sorry, a massive dark tank towering over the surrounding buildings. It's not a tank of water or oil. It's basically molasses. So the Purity Distilling Company has a 2.3 million gallon tank of the syrupy substance. And this is a testament to the industrial power of the area, the molasses. Is. So it's funny. It, there's actually surprisingly valuable. There was a case not too long ago in Canada where somebody did a maple syrup heist. And I think it was like millions and millions of dollars worth of maple syrup. Wow. Yeah, they would mark, it was to do market influence too. It was a mm. weird case. But so, yeah, so you have this flood, you got this company, you got a huge tank. And on in 1919, on January 15th, it was unseasonably warm following a cold snap and the molasses tank burst. So it doesn't just freak and rip apart, it literally explodes like a pressure explosion. And the molasses, I think they're saying here it was moving at 35 miles an hour so there's literally like a molasses wave coming at you so yeah the tsunami tsunami is engulfs though tragically does engulf and kills a bunch of people animals houses and kills 21 people and injures over 150 more rescue efforts were chaotic and it took weeks to fully clean up the aftermath and months for the investigations and lawsuits to resolve so the molasses flood that's pretty much that's the story but man i'd love to hear your thoughts on that and i wonder back then if oh that blows my mind i wonder what back then would even happen to a company that didn't have labor laws i wonder if they really got in that much trouble thoughts i listened to there's this book that i listened to what is it called sapiens or something like that and it talks about like history of us and they talk about the humrabi code and like how it's like an eye for an eye. If you damage a slave's eye, they give you like 20, I forget what they said, some type of currency with silver. That's what I imagine it would be similar to. Obviously not slaves or anything like that, but I think we might have mentioned this too, or I've talked about this recently, but what is equivalent like to a life monetarily? Like yeah. th they would probably give, oh, she's going to be widowed. Let's give her like, I don't know. I don't know what the... What year did you say it was again? Obviously, if it's 1919. 1919. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I would imagine they compensated widows somehow back then because I feel like that's a thing that was huge. Like, oh, that's Widow McNally. Like, they became, <laughs> that's like their, that's like their new first name. That's Widow McGovern. They don't all have to be Irish. I'm just, yeah. But, <laughs> they wear the uniform. That actually scares the crap out of me. Molasses. Like I'm a, like one of my small fears and it's very small because it would never usually happen, but drowning, like I can't even imagine molasses because since it's such a higher density, you can't really do anything about it. It's like quicksand. Like it's coming at me at 35 miles per hour. So I would probably die from the impact because it's so heavy, but like, for example, if I get stuck in it, like up to my waist, oh, yeah. I'd probably be fine. But if it's going over my head, I don't think there's any way that I can get out of it. That's like the sad part. And I'm not going to eat my way out. Your only hope is that in a million years, an alien race comes like in Jurassic Park. And Amber. Yeah. Yeah. yeah re reanimates you or something. Takes your. But, okay. I have a question too then about that. Have you thought much about the effects that would have, and this is, this is because I started thinking about that. This, when I read this is like what the effects would have been like 
on the with the cleanup and like the environmental impacts like i can't imagine like it's molasses rain's not just washing that away and i'm curious how to explain how they clean it up but i'm curious if you have a, an idea of what they did you were you are probably the expert over this but what there's a saying i guess for pollution what's it called dilution is the solution have you ever heard that <laughs> yeah i have man but I'm going to dumb myself down to people listening. I don't actually know what molasses comes from. What is molasses? So it's a grain. Okay. Is it like a fermented grain, basically? That's not a, no, that yes, would make it alcoholic. I think it's like a rye grain. Okay. Like that. And then they make the sticky molasses out of that stuff. But I don't know what else to use it for. I know it's in like. I know it's in candy. Mm. I know it's in extracts. I know it's in. I don't know. I know it, it'll pull your fillings out if you try to chew on it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. But yeah, what I imagine cleanup, when you said that, I'd just be like, oh, there's just going to be a lot of animals around just eating it up. It's That's, just yeah. marshmallow plant exploded. And then, oh, <laughs> or <laughs> you, uh, yeah. you guessed it pretty much, man. That was like, that's how a lot of it ended up getting cleaned up was 300 deer just yep. licking. Like, licking they, they had them licking for hours. They paid for overtime, <laughs> all this stuff. Like, it's almost like one of those things, though. It's like, you think that's from a fucking movie. And that's the thing I was wondering. Is how have we never heard? Like, myself, I've never heard of this. And I'm like, that's, it's not like nobody died. Like, 21 people died. And but, it makes you think all this stuff today. It's like, are people not even going to talk about, like, something like Sandy Hook? It's going to just be forgotten about? You can make, like, for example, I'm from, I went to Virginia Tech. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. But yep. it was, like, one of the, it was probably... I think there might have been like two school shootings after Columbine and then it was Virginia Tech. Yeah. Virginia, and yeah. it's, it just like, for example, I've mentioned this to a lot of my friends who went to tech. When do you, there's a, the run for the like 32 people who died. Like, when do you stop that? Like people are making jokes about Pearl Harbor and Pearl Harbor happened. What is it? Another 20 years. And it'll be like a hundred years. Yeah. For example, Alexander the Great, I think he killed more people than Hitler, but he was revered as like a great conqueror. Oh, yeah. But how do you separate, like, what amount of time equates to, like, having people's misdeeds and, like, stuff like the traumatized or, I don't know. It's hard to explain. No, it makes a lot of sense, though. You're right, because... It's like in time, it's, yeah. It's, and it's the other thing. History is written by the people that win. We all know that. But it makes you wonder, yeah, you're right. How is it going to look back on our society? Are we the good guy? Are we going to be the good guys? Can you hear anything outside of, out of no. what I'm saying? Okay. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, yeah, we can move on. From that, I just think, was there something else here? Oh, yeah. One. <laughs> It was the old time travel paradox. That was the one. Oh, one yeah. Went on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it was, but I want to rephrase the question. It's okay. If you had to go back in time, you have to go back in time. You have an opportunity to uh, stop the war like from happening by killing Hitler. Question is, at what age, how, like, at what age does it finally become okay to kill Hitler? And like, I was thinking about that, that's such a weird thing. And it goes into kind of what you were saying for it. And it's like, at what age all of a sudden is okay. Like I didn't like the idea of people say, would you go back in time and kill baby Hitler? I don't think a lot of people could, a lot of people could kill 20 or five year old Hitler possibly. I'm sorry. I just hear it like huge, like a railing upstairs. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's not coming through. As long as you don't hear anything, just let me know if you hear anything. Yep. So, yeah, you bring up a really good premise because I don't think you can really find a point because I've thought about this before and all these bad people in history, they don't start off bad. So it's, or at least I don't think they start off bad because you look at, do you remember or the news Bernie Madoff? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't think Bernie Madoff like started by like stealing money from people. I think he just probably slowly started owing money to people so he started like pulling money from like new people and he's oh i'll just fix it later and he really thought that he was going to fix it but i think i'm not justifying like really bad people i'm just saying it's not 
a switch that happens. And so when you have someone to think about the Hitler paradox, oh, when would be the best time to kill him? Killing him as a baby, you're just not even giving him a chance. You know what I mean? And if you try to shoot him later on, it's, I don't know. It's, is he really that bad then? So you might as well just shoot him, I guess, when he starts like his first deed or you, or let him redeem himself. I don't know. It, it's a hard question because it, I don't know. I don't know if you follow comics, but it's like a real big, like Batman, Spider-Man, yeah. uh, Superman type vibe where they always, they're always allowed a chance. They can never kill like Batman, Superman. They obviously outside of the multiverse, but they, they don't kill people because they think they deserve a second chance no matter what. The answer was seven. Seven is the age that you can kill. No, no it's yeah. Like it really is a, like I'm neurotic enough to like, I started thinking it was, if you kill somebody, you might just replace them with somebody worse. And that's a really, that happens a lot. Um, I don't know if there's a worse Hitler or Hitler extra, but the main no. reason mm. Hitler was able to go to power so well is I don't know if you know this or I don't really know this as well, but World War One, basically Germany got all these restrictions on them. And so at the time when Hitler basically was amassing power, like Germany was just like run ragged because they had all these restrictions on them. And he was basically rallying them to take them off. And that's what caused like all that appeasement, like when he was taking land and all that stuff. So that's why he had the full backing of basically his whole country because they had been under the hand of these sanctions from like World War II. Oh, yeah. World War One. Yeah, you create a common enemy. But uh, you're right. All like, you need is a narrative. And it could be, there's probably a handful of people that it would have been a better revolution than what he had. I don't know, amassed. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's you a could say the same thing about Mussolini at the same time, Stalin. All three of them were good buddies. And you know what? And the reason is, I'm not trying to be like, that guy but it's, it's funny how like we talk about we know about all that stuff and there's worse stuff that's probably going on there is worse stuff going on today yeah but we don't talk about it and it's probably because they're, it's in third world countries and all that stuff and it's weird yeah and this is what is it called up. disassociation basically yeah. since it's not in your not in my backyard not type my backyard. deal that is not my problem is that another thing that people uh, saying you're, yeah, you're gonna laugh you're gonna laugh about that or it was a big saying in when people like protest gravel pits or pits mines mines are like waste here like anytime it's environmental let's just say not my backyard they don't want the pop pipeline sorry pop line and call <laughs> yeah I'm trying to think okay well, that was pretty much the stuff we went through eh yeah oh well, yeah yeah i don't think there's anything else it was definitely a different time travel answer i think my other one was a little bit outlandish yeah we could there was something else that could do there was another one i was thinking of but it was such a hard time wording it that i'm like fuck i don't want to end up i'll say it to you now because it doesn't it might come out just really weird but it was you know how there's the multiverse theory and every decision you could maybe be spurring off like a new universe or timeline so there's this theory that if you travel back in time or forward, you can't, you're actually traveling to different timelines. So it was like, I started thinking, I'm like, oh, if you could go, it would be really cool to go to a timeline when you can't come back. But I was thinking like, what if like you went to a timeline and your timeline where you would die, essentially, like that could happen. And it's the oh, old man, Rick like, and Morty. It is. Yeah, it is a exactly like that. And then it, like the risk is massive. It really is. It's a huge risk. Just if you, from what I, mean, I understand about that theory. You could say that with so many things though. Like you go to a universe where the other funny thing I was reading from sapiens is that made me think was they talk about like the evolution from to get to homo sapiens, but it, it's not even that's, I'm not going to dive into religion or anything like that, but what if a frog would have had the right amount size because it's all about the right amount size brain and that we survive there could have been smart frogs there could have been like our level but they didn't survive does that make sense like all yeah. these different species could have been as smart as us but we were able 
I think it's like, it's going to sound stupid, but it didn't Bob, have to be. Yeah. It was like yeah. Bob Barker. If you've ever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The Pachinko. Mm-hmm. It was just luck that we were able to fall like all these different decisions. Yeah. Here's zero whenever the universe started and here's what, 25, 30 million years. And then up oh, humans made it out to, on top there. And I wouldn't even say we made it out on top, but I guess we did. Yeah, you should listen to it because they talk about all these details, like how how we were like lesser beings in the food chain and like how we ate scraps, like after all these like big kills by like wolves and stuff like that, like humans would come in and eat and how we slowly made our way up, found fire. And I don't know, it, it's pretty fascinating, at least the beginning. Oh, no, that is, I love that. And especially I love like the story of our evolution and well, I actually heard this cool thing not long ago was my biologist was talking about the chimps and one of the biggest things that the reason like fire was the kickstarter to our evolution was because they spent so much of their time, like two thirds of their day was spent chewing because they would eat a lot of the, they were primarily like carnivorous. So they spent all day chewing raw meat and all of a sudden with fire, they yeah they had all this time with nothing else to do so they start fucking and figuring out how to do things and it was like you fuck around and you find out right that saying so yeah they they did essentially and it was pretty interesting to hear what and then you yeah. had something else you had completely different populations and something oh yeah something we're here Fresh. yeah and there's also if you think back in history like amount of humans that have existed and it's, I love, it's like, I think, man, like the chance of me being here today that I even, the fact that I was born one and that I've lived even to 40, like, holy fuck, like this probably some astronomical number. And it's, oh yeah, I'm fucking well, grateful. Also, and, you should look at the other fact that you were born in Canada and not, I don't know, some dangerous area. Also, you look at least middle class too. That's yep. another thing. Mm-hmm. And it's just like all these little boxes. And like I said, I don't know if I already said this. I think I did on last time about Friday Night Lights. That one quote that guy says, it's like, you could be the luckiest person in the world and not even know it. Yeah. You're pretty lucky already. Yeah. I'm grateful for you, man. And I'm really grateful for this conversation today. Yeah, Um, no problem. Appreciate it. Man, I appreciate you coming on the show like this and putting up with the fact that I don't know what the fuck I'm doing half the time yet. Still a learning curve here. And no problem. Uh, yeah, man. You thank all, you very much. Only learn from mistakes. <laughs>